Hello, Joe Neville here, and welcome to this short video in which I'll be explaining how I used Docker Compose to help with my BGP eVPN lab build. Here's a basic diagram of the eVPN lab that I'm working with. I've got three VTEMPs here, and these are Aruba 6300s, which of course can run BGP eVPN, and then connecting to them, emulating the customer network, I've got three physical servers, and they are all running Ubuntu. Here's the requirement that I set myself for my eVPN lab then. I want to automate emulated MAC address generation to populate vtemp BGP eVPN tables. So that's quite a mouthful. Hopefully you understand that. I'll break it down. So the vtemps are running BGP eVPN and that protocol will send and receive data about MAC addresses of nodes on the network. The VTEMP will populate its tables with local MAC addresses that it hears from and also from remote MAC addresses that other BGP eVPN neighbours send to it. And rather than just having those physical Ubuntu servers on the network as just three MAC addresses, I thought it would be useful to somehow automate MAC addresses on the network so that I can scale up and scale down and I can essentially generate BGP updates for new MAC addresses appearing on the network at the click of a button. That's what I was looking for. And I found that I could match my requirement using Docker on the Ubuntu servers and specifically the Docker Compose tool with the scale CLI variable. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the component parts of the solution and how to write a Docker Compose file so that you can create multiple containers and a Docker network, all with a single Docker CLI command. Here's my eVPN lab again, and in this video, what I'm going to do is focus on Docker Compose on this Ubuntu Node 1. With a single command, what I'm going to do is create a Mac VLAN Docker network, which will be in the 172.18.1.0 slash 24 network, so the customer side network. But not only that, I'm also going to create multiple Alpine Linux containers and they are going to ping 172.18.1.2, so this Ubuntu node here, in the customer network. And that's going to, of course, create traffic, which will mean that the local VTEMP will see the MAC addresses of the Alpine Linux containers, add those MAC addresses as type 2s to its BGP eVPN table, and propagate those BGP updates to the neighboring peers. I can then sniff those updates in Wireshark and just generally use the source max in an automated and orchestrated fashion so that I can generate these updates as and when I choose for explanation and making videos. Here's how to perform this build and I'm starting off as I mentioned with Ubuntu Linux as the host server. I'm using the latest image that's 2110 and I've installed Docker and Docker Compose. That's a separate install. I'm not going to cover that here because all I had to do was go to docker.com and follow the general install for it. It was very easy. And with Docker and Docker Compose installed, the next step is to get a suitable image that the containers will be built from. As mentioned, I am using Alpine Linux. The really cool thing about this image is that it's very small, as you can see the size there, less than six meg. Thus, it's very lightweight, but it includes what I need. It includes a ping utility for creating ICMP echo requests, plus IP root 2. IP root 2 is the package that we can use to get an IP add command so that we can see the IP address. So it's great for networking, even though it's such a small image. By contrast, the Debian Linux image is much bigger and didn't include these in the latest release. It doesn't include these two packages. So Alpine Linux is absolutely perfect what, what I want to do here. So what I've done is I've performed a CLI command on my Ubuntu Linux server of docker pull and that will pull down an image from the docker hub and I've gone for Alpine, so the Alpine Linux image and I've gone for the tag of the latest release which is 3.15. You can put Alpine code on latest, so use the latest tag but I found that that's not very good because if you just always go latest, you don't know what version you're using. And between the different versions of images, you can't assume that a package is going to be in there. And that happened to me recently with a Debian image that on one version, when I was pulling it down with latest, it had certain packages that I was actually relying upon. And then subsequently, there was a new release, the latest release, the roll to a, a new version. And the maintainers had removed those packages. 
So I was unlucky there to some degree, but it just taught me that using latest as your tag with your images is really not the way to go. If you want to find out what the tags are, you can just do a search on Docker Hub, like go to docker.com and you'll find the different images there that you're looking for. A quick word on Docker Compose then, because this is separate from the base Docker install. Docker Compose is a tool for creating multi-container environments. Now the Docker CLI commands are great for individual containers when you're building them, like if you're doing the basic stuff. But if you're using Docker in a more intermediate or advanced setup, you'll most probably have multiple containers that you're building at once to build this service and this, in this environment essentially. And this tool allows you to do that with a single command. That's essentially what I'm doing here because I'm building the Docker network plus the containers in one go. So Docker Compose is absolutely perfect from this. And what is it? Well, just like so many things in IT nowadays, it's all in YAML. So we put in the keywords and the variables that we want for our services, for our network, save that to a local directory. And then in that directory, we can run the Docker Compose up command and that will result in our multi-container environment being built. The nice thing about using YAML for this is that we, of course, can check this into version control. So we can use Git to keep track of changes. So we can push that up to GitHub or GitLab and share it. You know the drill, I'm sure. Let's dive into Docker Compose then. Here's the Docker Compose up command for running local Docker Compose files. And I've added the scale keyword. I'll step through that uh, towards the end. And here is the YAML file for my lab build. There's a lot there, so let's go through it step by step. Focusing first of all on the network, so the foundation for the environment build here. This will create a new network. As I say, you don't have to create a Docker network beforehand. This section of the Docker Compose file will create a network called evpn-net1. I've given it a name there. The driver type will be Mac VLAN. More about that in a moment. And this driver options, this ties it to a physical interface on the server. So the Ubuntu host has a Ethernet port ENO1. I checked that by doing an IP address command on the Ubuntu host. That's in the 172.18.1.0 slash 24 network. So I've tied this Docker network to that. And if you're not familiar with Mac VLAN, it's one of the types of Docker network available to you. There's Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, there's the default of a bridge, there's user defined bridges. Now this one I thought works, it fits what I'm after because the containers all have their own Mac addresses. I was looking at other types of network and they use the same Mac address. So this one's great for me because I'm specifically looking for MAC addresses to populate my eVPN tables and this type of network provides that. Every container that boots up, it has its own MAC address and it appears as if it's on the physical network. So you can ping as though it's on the physical network. And what physical network? Well, it's tied to that parent address. So the containers look like they're sat on the same network as the host parent interface. Moving on then, and the next part is the IPAM configuration. So this is where we can assign a subnet to our new network. This is in the 172.18.1.0 slash 24. So that's the customer side network for my eVPN lab build. And I have servers that are assigned to this. So this isn't the only part of this network. I have the remote customer servers dot two and dot three and the local server so is, is dot one in this slash 24 and so what I've done is I've assigned also an IP range in that subnet so that my docker containers will have IP addresses from this range and as you can see I'm not conflicting with the statically configured servers that are already on the network so I'm going to ensure that my containers are only have addresses in the 172.18.1.16 slash 28 range. That's sufficient for my lab build. That's the network section then. And now on to the service, which is actually at the top here. Now the service is a basic set of criteria, which the containers will be built to. And we can then add commands and assign them to a network. So this is what you're seeing here. The service I'm going to call eVPN. The containers will be built from the eVPN service. Note that that's just a configurable, that could be anything, okay? This has got nothing to do with eVPN. Docker doesn't have any knowledge of eVPN in this context. 
it's just the name that I've given to this service. And as you can see there, I've got the image. So that's that Alpine image there, 3.15. I've got a command that once my containers are built, I want them to ping for a count of three that far Ubuntu server in the customer network. So they're going to be built and they're going to run this command. So 172.18.1.2, that's going to mean that the local VTemp will see the MAC addresses of the newly built containers and I've also assigned to the network there. That's why I showed you the network first, because you build the network and then you assign the containers to it. Thus, you can see there's a lot going on there with the build in this small YAML file. So we build a network, it's going to be Mac VLAN. We assign a parent interface, we give it a name there as well. We designate the IP addresses that the containers are going to have their IP addresses assigned from, and we build the service for the containers. We assign the image, a command for them to run, and assign them to our newly built network. So this is the docker compose file. We save that as docker-compose.yaml, and then we can instantiate that with the docker compose up command. That will look in the local directory for the docker compose yaml file and run it and build the environment as detailed therein. Now, if you just run docker-compose up by default, it will run a single instance of the service that it finds and the network. In our case, I wanted to have multiple versions of the Alpine Linux container. So what I found is I can add in this flag, the scale command, and then we enter in a keyword for a service. So this eVPN here, this is referencing the service there. Please note that eVPN doesn't mean anything to Docker. This is just a string as a name for a service, which I then reference here as a keyword, and X is the number that I want to instantiate for that service. So if I entered in docker-compose upscale eVPN equals five, Docker Compose would look in its local directory for a docker-compose.yaml file. It would find this, all being good. It would build the network and then it would build this eVPN service five times to create five containers using the Alpine Linux image, each of which will be assigned to this new network and they will all ping 172.18.1.2 which is exactly what I was looking for with my eVPN lab build. So my local VTemp will see these MAC addresses, populate its table and propagate those across eVPN. And I can do all of that with this small YAML file and this single command. If I want to tear that down, you can also kill this off with a docker compose down and then you can remove them all using various docker compose commands, which I'll show you when we do the build in a moment. So saying that, let's dive into the demo. Here is my demo setup then. I am logged into three nodes here. On the left is my Ubuntu server that I'm going to run Docker Compose on. And then over here is my Aruba 6300. That's the first and local VTemp. And then I've logged into another remote VTemp so we can see the BGP updates. So we check on the local VTemp at the moment. I'll show you the local Mac address table, you can see not much going on there. And then also in the BGP eVPN table, we don't have any type two entries in there at the moment, reflecting what we can see in the Mac address table. And then over here on the Ubuntu server, let's show you the basic setup then. I don't have a Mac VLAN network at the moment and no containers on this system at the moment. So we do an LS, you can see there's that docker compose .yml. I'll show you that, we've already seen it, but I'll show you the file, there you go. The services, eVPN, I've got that Alpine image, the ping, there's the network, and here I'm going to create the network, it's Mac VLAN, ENO1, and there's that range, the subnet, for the slash 24 and the slash 28 that I want to take the IP addresses from. Okay, so let's run the docker compose command then. So it's docker compose. I'm gonna go for up to bring it up and I need the scale flag as well. eVPN, remember that's the service within my docker compose YAML file and I'm going to go for five. Now, if I run that, we can see creating the network with the Mac VLAN driver. And then you can see the pings going through. We've got five different containers being built. 
zero packet loss over to 172.18.1.2. That's on the customer network, as I mentioned. So that server sits behind this VTEMP here. So let's have a look at those tables on the local VTEMP. There you can see the local MAC addresses of the containers. And those will be entered into the eVPN table as type twos, as you can see here, generating those BGP eVPN updates that I wanted. If I show the remote VTEMPs BGP eVPN table, there we can see them and they are being learnt via BGP from the next hop. And this is that 10.0.0.1 is this VTEMP, the 6300-1. Back on the Ubuntu host then, I'll show you the network. We'll do a Docker network LS. And there's that eVPN-net1 that was created. You can see the Docker PS. So the containers are not running. That's the thing with Compose. The service will just run for the task that you give it and then it will be shut down. So the containers here were up for the ping only and then stopped. I can see them if I do a dash A. There you can see the five containers which have all exited. Now we can tear this down quite easily with a Docker Compose down. And that will remove the containers and it will remove the network. So if I do a docker network ls, you can see the evpn-net1 network has been removed. Docker ps. Oh, so those containers, those stopped containers have all been removed as well. So it's just one command to build the network and the containers and then another to tear it down, which is very nice. Now they will still be over on the uh, vtemps because there's no active monitoring between the Ubuntu server here container and the L2 table on the vtemp. So if I look at the MAC address table, you'll still see them and those will time out when they age out after 300 seconds. So the BGP table as well will still be populated and then the remote side will still have them. There we can see them. They're still live according to the BGP network. But what we can do to force this is do a clear MAC table locally. And the VLAN is the 101. If I clear that, then you can see they're gone from the network there. All the local ones are gone from the network. And so we just see the type two, which is 172.18.1.2, though the remote. Now, if we look on dash two, those will be removed. Yeah. So you've just got the local dot two entry. So that's it for this short video about Docker Compose and how I've used it to automate the generation of MAC addresses for my BGP eVPN lab. I hope you found that useful. I quite enjoy using these different technologies rather than just using VMs, using Docker and using the Compose tool to take advantage of these newer tools that are out there in a networking context. But that's it for now. I'm going to carry on diving into BGP eVPN for some future videos. That just leaves me to say, my name's Joe Neville. Thank you for watching and goodbye.